What if I told you that a set of numbers could tell a story just as gripping as your favorite series? Surprised? Well, you're not alone. Picture this, your data doesn't just sit on the page. It communicates, persuades, and even entertains your audience. Hi, I'm Louisa, a data visualization specialist at Flourish, and I'm excited to share with you the transformative power of data storytelling. In this video, we'll explore the essentials of turning complex information into narratives that not only inform, but also engage and persuade. Whether you're navigating your first data project or seeking to refine your skills, this guide is packed with practical tips to enhance your data storytelling. With anything we create, we want to make sure that our audience listens, remembers, and cares. And this is where data storytelling comes in. There's a few different ways to get started with telling your story. You might already have a good idea of what your data looks like and what insights you want to pull out, but sometimes you need to do a little bit of exploration first. A good way to do this is to experiment with different chart types. So let's do that. First, we need to consider what type of data we have. Is it categorical, numerical, or perhaps time-based? The nature of your data will significantly influence your chart choice. If you're not sure, check out our other video covering data basics. To illustrate trends over time, line charts are your best bet. They're straightforward and effective for tracking changes. For comparisons across categories, nothing beats the simplicity of bar charts. If you want to add a more human element to your data, pictograms are a great way to use icons to represent data points in a more relatable and visually engaging way. Geographical data? Maps are your go-to for adding that spatial context enriching your story. And for those looking to explore relationships between variables, scatter plots can reveal intriguing patterns and correlations. For more information on this, make sure you check out our blog post on the topic. Let's look at our data. We have a data set on global monthly average surface temperatures. This data is exploring trends over time, which is probably best suited to a line chart. Next, it's time to identify a compelling insight to drive your narrative. This insight will act as the hook of your story. The hook often emerges when something changes, revealing an interesting or unexpected pattern in the data. For instance, a growing gap. If the space between data points is getting bigger, it could mean that some areas are improving faster than others, which could be a wake-up call or an opportunity. Converging to diverging. If data points that were coming together are now splitting apart, it could signal a change in what your customers want or how your operations are running. Maybe an outlier pops up. An outlier might just be a mistake, or it might be something super interesting that deserves a closer look. Once you've pinpointed these elements, you're ready to turn your findings into an engaging data story. We've looked at our data and we already know that we want to highlight that temperatures in recent years have been higher than in the past. We can do this by showing the average temperature per month with every line on the chart representing a year. Let's import our data. In Flourish, click New Visualization, then click on the option for a line chart. Click on the Data tab and upload your data. You can do this by copying and pasting it across or by uploading an Excel file, a CSV, TSV, or even link to a URL. Now we need to bind our columns to choose which parts of our spreadsheet represent which values within our data. In some Flourish templates, Flourish will bind your columns automatically, but you can always adjust them as needed. I want to show the months on the x-axis, so I'm putting column A into the labels time binding. My values are in columns B through BX. We have quite a few years to visualize in our data. And I'll leave the rest of the binding options for a bit later. We can already start to see the hook for our story. There's a seasonal pattern. Temperatures are higher in the summer months. Now that we have the base of our story, it's time to take it a step further through our use of color. An effective use of color helps us bring our data to life. By assigning specific hues to different variables, we create a visual narrative. At the moment, our chart looks very messy and we can't take any insight from it. This is because every year is represented by a different color. Color can also be used to highlight important data points and draw attention to the key narratives of your story. In our chart, we want to highlight how recent years have been warmer than ever before. We can do this by assigning colors to the years we want to highlight. To do this, let's go into the color settings and add custom overrides. Go to the Custom Overrides field and enter the label name for which you wish to set the color, followed by a colon and the desired color value. You can write the color out by name, or you can put in a hex code or RGB declaration. But I don't want to stop here. 
Let's set the rest of our palette to grey so that the recent years really stand out and the colour carries real meaning in the story. To do this, click on your colour palette and remove all the colours. Finally, add in your grey and disable the extend toggle. The next step is to check if the colours we've picked are accessible. High contrast is crucial, not just between your chart and the background, but also among the data points themselves. The Web Content Accessibility Guidelines provide information on achieving optimal contrast ratios for text and graphic elements. There are lots of tools online that allow you to test whether your labels and colours maintain a strong contrast against your chosen background. You can change the background colour of your chart in Flourish with this setting here. And most of our labels have an auto contrast setting to help you create accessible charts easily. The key is to choose a background that complements your data colors, enhancing readability and clarity. Now that we've ensured our palette is accessible and has enough contrast with our background color, we want to make sure that we're applying these colors in a way that assists our narrative. Imagine trying to read a book where the character names change from chapter to chapter. Confusing, right? The same principle applies to the colors in your charts. Using identical hues for the same variables across charts establishes a visual consistency, making your data easier to follow and understand. For example, in our data, we're highlighting the years 2022 to 2024. If on one chart we use red for 2023, and on another we use yellow, don't you assume we're talking about a different year? Okay, so our chart is starting to look pretty good, but how do we bring it all together and really turn this into a data story? Let's start with titles. This is the first thing your audience will see, so it really needs to pack a punch. A good title for a data visualization should be both informative and concise. It should give viewers a clear idea of what the data is about without overwhelming them with all the details. Think of your title as your elevator pitch. It should grab attention and encourage further exploration. Our line chart shows the monthly average surface temperatures by year. That isn't a very interesting title, is it? It's better if we focus on the story we want to tell which is what we identified earlier when finding our hook. In our case, we found that temperatures in 2023 broke all records and 2024 is on track to be even warmer. A good title could be Earth is heating up. Next, we look at the subtitles. Your subtitle is an invaluable tool for adding context to your visualization. While your title grabs attention, your subtitles should provide additional information that supports this, such as the time frame of the data or a key insight that you want to highlight. Subtitles are your chance to guide your audience's understanding without cluttering your visualization with too much text. For our chart, a good subtitle would include that the data shows monthly average temperatures worldwide from 1950 to 2024. That's better. But our legend still makes our chart look very cluttered, and it's a bit distracting. Why don't we turn the legend off and use line labels instead? Line labels are a great way to position the name of your series right next to them, so you don't have to go back and forth between the legend and your chart to identify what a data point represents. In Flourish, you can easily select which elements you want to show a line label on. You do this by going into the Labels settings and first enabling Show Labels on Lines. Then, put the years you want to display in the Show Only Certain Labels text box. In our case, we want to show only 2024, 2023, and 2022. Much better! Now, annotating your data is where you can really bring your story to life. Annotations and highlights can add context, explain anomalies, or draw attention to the most important parts of your visualization. For example, in our chart, we can show that temperatures hit their peak in the summer. Let's add this as a highlight on the x-axis. The format is the following. First, we need to put in the text we want to display as an axis highlight, then two colons, and then the month, like this. Wow, this chart is really starting to come together. Interactive elements also play a crucial role in emphasizing your story's key narratives. It might be that there are multiple elements to your story and showing them all at once would be overwhelming. This is where you can add a filter to let your audience explore the data further. In our case, we not only have global data, but also for all countries and regions worldwide. This gives us the opportunity to add a filter to our chart so that our readers can select their country to explore the change in temperatures. Our data set with all the individual countries is in the same format as before. It's just much longer and has an additional column specifying the country or region. All we need to do to create our filter view is bind the column with our country names, column A, to the row filter binding. 
Amazing, now we can filter for different countries. That was easy. Now all that's left to do is add in our source. Let's put this in the footer. Just go to the footer section of your chart and you'll see that there's a field for the name of the source and a field for the URL to your source. This is great to add so that people are able to explore the data themselves. And publish. I want to embed this on my website, so I'm going to use the script embed code generated here. We always recommend using the script rather than the iframe because it adjusts well across different devices. Let's copy it and then you can embed this directly into your website or CMS. Awesome, that's it. We've just told an entire story in a single chart. Wasn't that easy? Now that we've done this, I can't wait to see what else you might create. Oh, hey, you're still here? I guess you're eager for more then. If you want to learn even more about how to use Flourish, then make sure you check out our playlist. Or if you want some more in-depth learning, why not check out one of our webinars? You can catch up on those right here. Thanks for watching and make sure to subscribe so you don't miss our next video. See you again soon.